Before we begin, if you have not already participated in Webinar 2, Describing the Observation Framework, stop and go back. Make sure that you have completed the questionnaire at the end of that module before proceeding. This is the final of three modules, and you will need the learning from the first two modules to complete this last session. Welcome to the last of the three asynchronous modules to prepare you for implementing the Delaware Teacher Growth and Support System. This module will provide you an introduction to the observation and evaluation process. By the end of this webinar, you will know the steps in the Delaware Teacher Growth and Support System process, understand the roles and responsibilities of both the teacher and the administrator in the process, understand the process of writing professional growth goals, and know how to set attainable goals and create plans to meet those goals. This session does not cover calibration on the framework or how to use the DSC. Administrators will receive more in-depth training, including calibration, over the course of their training institute. All administrators and teachers will receive resources and supports to use the DSC to implement this process. The last module focused intently on the observation framework. This framework defines the core set of expectations and learning focus priorities for teachers and students. In the design of the Delaware Teacher Growth and Support System, the steering committee created the framework first. The content of the framework then drove the design of the process. The process you will learn about today was created to best support the use of this framework in advancing teacher growth and support. The steering committee used several guiding principles when they designed this process. These guiding principles are rooted in research, experience, and feedback from teachers. First, the steering committee aimed to simplify the process and forms as much as possible. Second, the steering committee prioritized design elements that drove toward educator growth and away from steps only focused on compliance. Third, the committee aimed to maintain a focus on outcomes rather than inputs. And finally, the committee considered the implications of what is included and what is not. The idea of what gets measured is what matters drove the process design. Just a reminder from past modules that this process was created to be simplified. Simplifying the system is means to streamline the steps and compliance activities so that the time that administrators and teachers spend is a better use of their time focused on teacher growth. This does not mean that the system will take less time to implement. What it does mean is that the time spent on implementation will be more productive and beneficial for teachers and ultimately for students. Here is a high level overview of the steps in the Delaware Teacher Growth and Support System. We will review each step in turn through this module. As we review each step, we will also describe the specific roles and responsibilities of both the teacher and the administrator. When you see these characters on the screen, you will know we are discussing roles and responsibilities. Teacher growth and development begins with reflecting on current practice and setting goals to drive future action. So, the Delaware Teacher Growth and Support System begins with the creation of professional growth goals and student improvement goals. Professional growth and student improvement goals and plans are created at the Fall Goal Setting Conference. The purpose of the conference is to articulate clear goals for professional growth and student learning to drive ongoing observation, feedback, and support. Every teacher will set student improvement goals. A student improvement goal is a goal for student learning that helps to measure the teacher's impact on their students. Student improvement goals are based in student assessment data and assessed at the spring conference at the end of the year. The rating on the student improvement goal becomes the rating for performance area four. All information for student improvement goals is captured in the DSC. 
The teacher's role in creating student improvement goals is to first decide on the two data points to be used in the goals. The teacher may use one measure for at least two different cohorts, may use two different measures for at least one cohort, or may use two different measures for two different cohorts. The teacher is then responsible to administer the measures to gather baseline data, present the baseline data and proposed targets, and be prepared to discuss them with their administrator. The administrator's responsibilities include ensuring the selection of at least two data points, approving the cohorts, which may not be less than 10 students, discuss and approve the appropriate measures, and discuss the baseline data and targets with the teacher. These are the details of the measures that teachers can select. Measure A, state assessments, are for ELA and or math, grades four through eight. Measure B are content assessments. They are educator developed and department approved, district developed and department approved, or externally developed and department approved. Measure C are growth goals, which are educator developed and department approved. Each year, every teacher will also set professional growth goals. Professional growth goal is an ambitious goal that drives the teacher's professional development. Professional growth goals are tied to a specific indicator and based in both teacher performance and the needs of students. Professional growth goals include action steps, timelines, and the resources the teacher will need to meet the goal. They are set at the fall conference and can be revised at the mid-year. And they drive the focus for feedback and support for the teacher. All information for professional growth goals are captured in the DSC. There are three types of professional growth plans. A collaborative plan is best used with teachers who are making progress on their growth and would benefit from a collaborative partnership with their leader to accelerate this progress. Teachers who may be at a new teaching assignment or a new school may have a collaborative growth plan. A self-directed growth plan is best used with teachers who typically receive consistent high ratings on past evaluations, both on teacher practice and student improvement measures. A directed growth plan is meant for a teacher who has significant growth areas that require intensive support or for teachers who are new to the profession and would benefit from more administrator support. Directed growth plans are required for teachers who receive a level one on the prior year's summative evaluation. The teacher has the following responsibility in setting professional growth goals. First, the teacher reviews formative observation feedback and summative ratings from past years. They also review their student performance from the past year and write or collaborate on writing their professional growth goals based on this performance. Teachers also set student improvement goals and input all information into the DSC. The administrator's role is to review teachers' past performance data, both for the teacher and their students, to determine the type of growth plan to assign to the teacher, and to write or collaborate on writing professional growth goals that align to an indicator or descriptor on the framework that would support the student improvement goal. The administrator is also responsible for confirming the goals. Once professional growth and student improvement goals are set and the fall conference has occurred, the administrator can begin observations. The purpose of regular observation and feedback is to collect evidence of teacher practice aligned to the framework, identify areas for feedback and support, and engage in a cycle of professional growth to benefit the teacher and ultimately students. Classroom observations will be used to collect evidence to support rating each of the three performance areas and each of the nine indicators on the framework. 
Every teacher will have at least four brief observations each year. Observations are brief, about 15 minutes long. They are almost always unannounced, except for the first observation of a teacher new to the school. Observations are designed to capture evidence on all nine indicators over the course of the year. It is not necessary to capture evidence for each indicator during each observation. The descriptors under each indicator are used as a guide to capture and sort evidence. Observations are not rated. Instead, observations are followed by a debrief and a feedback in the form of a claim evidence impact statement. All observation evidence will be collected in the DSC. Here is more detail on the observation process. First, the administrator observes the lesson, taking literal notes and collecting artifacts if possible. The administrator then analyzes their notes by determining the likelihood of learning in the lesson, identifying the lesson objective, and determining if the lesson is aligned to the objective, analyzing their notes, and beginning to sort evidence by indicator. The administrator then prepares for the debrief with the teacher. They may draft their claim based on the evidence they've collected, draft the impact based on the student learning, and any questions to help them clarify evidence and align to a level of performance. The administrator may also identify data and evidence to share with the teacher. In the debrief, the administrator asks questions from the, of the teacher and gathers feedback. They share evidence and where it aligns on the framework. They also share the claim evident, and evidence to support their claim and collaborate on possible next steps with the teacher. After the debrief, the administrator may make any modifications to alignment of evidence as necessary. They tag the evidence in the DSC, write the final claim, evidence, impact, and action step, and submit the observation to the teacher. Just to reiterate, in preparing for the debrief, the administrator will review the evidence and begin to think about what indicators the evidence aligns to. This will help the administrator begin to identify where they need further clarification before finalizing alignment to indicators. Based on the teacher's goal for the lesson, the evidence might be tagged differently. For example, if the students are doing an activity in which they are asked to sort coins, write the value of each coin, and determine the total amount, the administrator may need to ask the teacher about the goal for this activity. Was the goal of the activity to review the value of coins? Or was the goal of the activity to practice new learning of adding decimals? If the goal was to review the value of coins, the evaluator may tag the evidence to 3.2, questioning and discussion. If the goal of the activity is to practice new learning, then the evaluator may tag the evidence to 2.3, checks for understanding and feedback. So again, the administrator can use the debrief to ask additional questions of the teacher to help them best sort the evidence. After every observation, the administrator will write a claim evidence impact statement. This is a qualitative description of performance. The claim is a statement summarizing the element of teacher performance that has the greatest impact on student learning in that lesson. The evidence are the indicators to which the claim aligns, with evidence from the observations. The impact is the impact that the claim has on student learning. And action steps are specific actions for the teacher to take in the areas of focus. Administrators will be trained on the claim evidence impact process in detail through their training institute. The teacher's role and responsibility in the observation is to share data, information, and artifacts about the lesson with the administrator, to participate in the observation debrief conversation, and to acknowledge the observation in the DSC. 
The administrator's role is to conduct observations to collect a variety of evidence, take low inference evidence notes during observation, sort evidence after the observations, identify questions for the teacher debrief, meet with the teacher for the debrief, and then write the claim evidence impact statement with action steps. Once the teacher has had two observations, it's time for the mid-year conference. The purpose of the mid-year conference is to review evidence gathered from observations to date, check in on progress toward professional growth and student learning goals, and revise professional growth goals if needed. The first objective of the mid-year conference is to document progress toward professional growth goals. Second, to make ch any changes to the type of growth plan or add new professional growth goals if necessary. And third, to evaluate student data to assess progress toward goals. At the mid-year conference, the teacher and evaluator review data collected, progress on the growth plan, action steps taken, and student progress. The administrator may decide that the teacher needs a change in professional growth plan type, or the teacher and administrator may design, decide to write new growth goals. But in most cases, the plan type will typically not change at the mid-year unless it is necessary to support student growth. The teacher has the following roles and responsibilities for the mid-year conference. First, to review feedback collected to date and progress on their professional growth goals, to participate in the mid-year conference with the administrator, and to identify and engage in any revisions to professional growth goals. The administrator is responsible for reviewing all evidence collected to date, assessing performance on the professional growth goals, meeting with the teacher to review evidence to date and determine changes to goals, and strategizing remaining observations to ensure they collect adequate evidence to rate each indicator in the spring. The last step in the Delaware Teacher Growth and Support System process is the Spring Evaluation Conference. Every teacher will have a Spring Evaluation Conference after at least four observations are complete. The purpose of the Spring Evaluation Conference is to discuss student improvement goals and final ratings, discuss indicator and performance area ratings, and discuss progress on professional growth goals. So again, the teacher and the administrator will discuss progress on student improvement goals, discuss indicator and performance area ratings on the framework, and discuss progress on professional growth goals. After the spring conference, the teacher will receive a summative evaluation report that includes their summative rating on the framework and student improvement goals. At this time, an evaluator may determine that a directed growth plan may be necessary for the teacher for the next school year. Prior to the spring conference, the administrator will determine the teacher's final ratings on the framework. The first three ratings for performance areas one, two, and three are informed by evidence from the four observations over the course of the year. The fourth rating on student improvement goals is informed by the student assessment data. These four ratings are combined to determine the teacher's summative evaluation rating of a level one, two, three, or four. To arrive at the final rating, the observer first assigns each of the three rubric performance areas a rating based on the preponderance of evidence. Student improvement points are assigned using the process currently in use. Each of the four performance areas is then weighted equally. So if a performance area has a rating of a level four, that 
performance area is worth four points. Level three is worth three points. Level two is worth two points. And a level one rating is worth one point. All points are then totaled across the four performance areas to determine the summative rating. A total of 15 to 16 points results in a summative rating of a level four. A total of 11 to 14 points results in a summative rating of a level three. A total of eight to 10 points results in a rating of level two and four to seven points results in a summative rating of a level one. Before the spring conference, the teacher first decides on their student improvement goal rating based on their student data. They gather any evidence for progress on their professional growth goals and complete a self-evaluation of each indicator on the framework. The teacher also updates the student improvement goal results. Then, before the spring conference, the administrator reviews the teacher's self-evaluation ratings, the professional growth goals and student improvement goals. They examine all evidence collected from observations over the course of the year and identify a rating for each indicator and each performance area based on the preponderance of evidence. The conference is an opportunity for teachers to share their reflections and for evaluators to provide their feedback. At the conference, the teacher and the administrator review all data collected over the course of the past year, review progress on professional growth goals and student improvement goals, document rate feedback, and review the final rating for each indicator and performance area. The teacher and administrator may also begin to discuss plans for next year's professional growth goals. After the spring conference, after participating in the spring conference with the administrator, the teacher will acknowledge the summative evaluation report form in the DSV. Again, the administrator will meet with the teacher to share their ratings and feedback, confirm the student improvement or performance area four rating, articulate key strengths and growth areas for the teacher, review all evidence collected over the course of the year, and use that evidence to assign ratings to performance areas one, two, and three. They will draft and then finalize the evaluation report to share with the teacher. The following is an implementation timeline for the pilot of the Delaware Teacher Growth and Support System. Your district may have specific deadlines for each step to be completed. First, fall conferences will begin in September and all should be complete by the middle of October. As soon as the fall conference is complete, observations can begin, with the mid-year conferences occurring between December and February, once two, at least two observations are completed. Observations continue into the spring, with the spring summative evaluation conference being complete by the middle of May. Again, your district will have specific deadlines for each of these process steps. Let's return to the professional growth plan and specifically the process for creating high quality professional growth goals. There are several criteria for high quality professional growth goals. First, strong goals are specific. They include a clear practice that the teacher will implement or a clear change to be made. High quality goals are measurable. They're able to be observed and measured. The administrator and teacher should be able to know if the goal has been met. High quality goals are ambitious. They should be considered rigorous and a stretch for the teacher, but still attainable. Goals should also be relevant. High quality growth goals are connected to the students, the content and the context in which the teacher is teaching that year. Finally, high quality goals are time bound. They are clear on by when the impact of the goal can be seen and felt in the classroom. Let's review the steps for setting high quality professional growth goals. First, reflect on the teacher's past practice. This could include reviewing past DPAS2 evaluation documents, 
feedback the teacher has received from administrators and colleagues, evidence of where their teaching has enhanced student learning, and evidence of where their students may need different types of support. The next step is to study the framework. Consider what indicators in the framework present new or different expectations for the teacher. In what indicators of the framework is the teacher particularly strong in their practice? Which indicators present an area of growth for the teacher? Next, look ahead to the, this coming year. Consider the students who will be in the teacher's classroom and what they may need to be successful, the content the teacher is teaching and what is required to effectively teach that content, and the context in which the teacher is teaching. Is this a new assignment or a new building? Is it content that is new to the teacher? Consider these three needs as you achieve, move to step four, which is to draft the goal. Each of the steps on the screen are the parts of the steps also in the DSC. So each heading will be in the DSC and include the information you will enter. First, you'll enter the headline for the goal in the box Professional Growth Goal. You'll then identify the indicator or indicators to which the goal is aligned. For actions and benchmarks, you'll articulate the steps you or the teacher will take to implement the change to meet the goal. Then you'll articulate the support and resources that the teacher will need from their administrator to meet the goal. You'll input either by when the goal will be met or how often the change can be observed in teaching. And finally, you'll include evidence to be collected, which will help the administrator and teacher know how they will know if the goal is met. Let's review a sample professional growth goal for a fourth grade math teacher. The first step is teacher reflection on past performance. Take a moment to read this teacher's reflection on their past performance. Based on this reflection, the teacher has identified the following goal. Expand my repertoire of questioning and discussion techniques to engage all students more deeply in class discussion and get to a point where students are talking more than me. This is aligned to level three in the framework. The teacher has identified that this goal aligns to rubric indicators 1.3 and 3.2. Then the teacher identified the different actions they will take to help meet this goal. Take a moment to read the actions the teacher articulated. The teacher also identified the resources they will need to be successful in meeting the goal, which include the opportunity to observe other teachers' classrooms, and access to training on questioning and discussion techniques. The teacher then identified the timeline by which, um, according to which they will implement the changes in the goal. You can read the timeline in the timeline or frequency box. Lastly, the teacher articulated the evidence that will be collected to show that they have met the goal. Read the evidence in the evidence box. Congratulations, you have finished the third and final online module for the Delaware Teacher Growth and Support System. For your participation to be considered complete, please complete the module three exit ticket located in the Schoology course. Your feedback on this exit ticket will help the department to design additional trainings, communications, and resources to meet your needs and the needs of your colleagues. Once you have completed the exit ticket, complete the course assurance in Schoology to affirm that you have completed all steps in the asynchronous modules.